When you're first learning Blender, and especially if you're doing it mostly for 3D printing, at some point you'll see this little blue whirly physics icon in the properties panel. And one day, when you're feeling particularly courageous, you'll click on it and stare in awe at the wonderful sounding buttons you find there. Things like force field, um, rigid body constraint, you then click on one of these buttons, stare in horror at all the gibberish options that are all over the place, hurriedly look away, and then sweating, step slowly away from the keyboard, never to return. Now that's often a very good choice. Today, we're going to use this watery model, no, not this rainy model, go away, uh, that's better. We're going to use this model with vaguely realistic water and we're going to use a physics simulation to do it. There are lots of other interesting things we can do with water, but I'll save those for another video if this one turns out to be of interest to anyone. Please let me know in the comments below if you are. So let's get started. Firstly, of course, we'll need to delete this cube. So with it selected, press X and delete. Now we're going to need a tap or a faucet. I modelled this one quickly to save a bit of time, but if anybody wants it, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can find a way to make it available. Now a simulation in Blender doesn't happen everywhere, it doesn't happen all over your scene. It basically happens in a box and everything that needs to interact with the water simulation needs to be in that box. So the first thing we're going to do is make a box and make it as big as we think we will need. So in object mode, we will add a mesh and a cube and then I'll scale this cube up by pressing S and scale to about here. The bigger this cube is the slower our simulation will be so it's best not to make it bigger than we need. Grab Z and I'll bring it up a bit to just under the tap and then probably make this a little bit wider. So if we grab Shift Z and we can scale it out. There you go. Now the tap or faucet itself is not going to interact with the water, only the bottom bit of the tap is. So it's fine for this tap or faucet to be sticking out of our cube. Now this cube is where our physics simulation is going to live. And Blender calls this a domain. So the thing we need to do now is to tell Blender that this cube is our domain. We go to the physics tab here. Click Fluid, and then under the Fluid section in Type, change this to Domain. And our cube will go into wireframe mode. If you have a look at this little box here, this small box represents the size of a water particle in our simulation. And as you can see, this is actually quite big. So if we want our simulation to look a little bit more realistic, we need to increase the resolution. So let's do that. What we need to do is change the resolution divisions here. Now the higher this goes, the slower the simulation will occur and really large numbers will take hours. I'm going to set this around about 80, 77 maybe. But now we need to change the domain type from here to liquid. Our cube becomes solid again, but never mind. Now I want to turn X-ray mode on by clicking here. So I can see our domain and I can see that the tap is, or faucet, is sticking into the domain as it should do. And this looks all right. When the water comes out of the tap, what's it going to do when it hits the edges of our domain? We have some choices. It can collide with the domain, which means it'll splash off the walls of, of this box, or it can just disappear. And really for our simulation, we don't want it to interact with the edges of the domain but we do want it to interact with the floor we want it to make a little pool of water on the floor so let's set that up with our domain still selected we go over here and scroll down to the border collisions and i'll uncheck front back right left top but leave the bottom on the remaining option is to select mesh here if we don't select mesh, we will get particles instead of a mesh. And unless you have a really teeny weeny printer, we don't want this. And that's about it for the domain. I can almost guarantee that this won't give us what we want. It'll be close, but we'll probably have to go back and tweak settings afterwards when we see what we've got. So 
So now we have a faucet or tap and we have a domain. But now we need an object that water can come out of. Any object can be a water source. So let's add one and place it in our faucet or tap where we think the water should be coming out. So go back to solid mode. So while we're here, we should turn off the domain in the outliner so that we can see what's going on a little bit better. And then we go add mesh UV sphere. And there it is. So let's put it in position in the tap or faucet. How much water comes out of this depends on its size and the number of faces. So if you want less water, make it smaller. In older versions of Blender, there was a setting to control water flow, but that doesn't seem to be one anymore. If anyone knows how to do that, apart from fiddling around with geometry of your water source, please let me know in the comments section below. So this looks about right. This is where we want the water to come out of. I'm going to rename this object, so I remember, and I think I'll call it water. So now we have to tell Blender that this UV sphere is a water source. I'll go into the Physics tab and select Fluid. We change the type to Flow to indicate that it will um, flow and change the Flow type to Liquid. Next, we need to change the Flow behavior from Geometry to Inflow. We choose Inflow rather than Outflow because we want water to flow into our simulation. So now we have enough to try this. First, let's turn the domain back on. And then we can hit the play button down here. And I will leave this with natural time just for a short while so that you can see how long it will take even with a small resolution that we have here. If you set it to 150, 200, even with a very good computer, you're going to have it go very slow. But then I will speed it up. Now, although this is working, you can see it's a bit of a mess with water splashing all over the place and not looking very realistic at all. There are several settings that might be affecting this, but I think the first one for me to try is to just increase the resolution. So I'll quickly do that. I'll press rewind on the animation and we'll press play again. Now this is looking a bit better. I'll press pause here, but look what's happened to the water at the edges of our domain. It just kind of disappears. Okay, so this might be good enough, and if so, hurrah! For me though, the water on the floor is not quite as exciting as I'd like it. It looks a bit odd, flat. So I'm gonna do something to make the water just slightly thicker. In the domain object, I will select the domain object, and I'm gonna find the viscosity option and select it. The current value is 0 0.05, and that's way too big for our little simulation, and it will take hours to do anything. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.0002, which will still give a tiny bit of viscosity. So let's try this simulation again. It will be a bit slower this time, but I'll speed things up so it isn't too boring. Now I think this looks okay, but I think it could also look a little bit better if the water was moving a little bit faster. Now we can do this as follows. If I select our water object and tick on initial velocity, I can give it a bit of a speed boost along the X, Y or Z axis. And for this model, I want the water to come down out of the tap or faucet a bit faster. So I'm going to change this Z value to minus 0 0.001. You only need small values. Let's look at this simulation again. You can see it's a bit more wavy now on the floor and I think this is pretty good. Now if you look at it carefully you can see that because we have some viscosity now the water isn't exactly straight up in this case. It may be okay if you have a big model but here it is definitely not straight. Also, if I hit this little X thing, you can see it bends a bit to the right too. We'll fix this in a moment. Let's choose which frame you want to use. If 
find a frame by dragging the blue playhead thing until you get a frame you like. If you're going to 3D print this, I suggest looking for one that won't require support, but that's up to you. I will choose this one. It is still bent, but as I said, we will fix that in a bit. I would suggest saving at this point because we are now going to break it. Select the domain object and go to Object Convert Mesh. Now all our simulation work is gone and we are left with a normal mesh for our model. If you have any splashy bits, I would remove those in edit mode. I don't, but if I had, I would go into edit mode, hover the mouse over the water, press L and then select Invert and then X delete vertices. This should remove any stray bits. OK, with that out of the way, let's straighten up the water. The easiest way to do this, and it is really easy, is to use the Sculpting Pose Brush. It is simple, trust me on this. Firstly, I would suggest turning off the tap in the outliner so we can see all of the water. Select the water, go into Sculpt Mode and select the Add Face Sets button here. Hover over the top of the water and press Shift and W and slowly drag the mouse down the water like this until you get to the puddle of water on the floor, but don't include the puddle. You will see it colour in the water as it draws in a face set, but yours may be a different colour. Now, go to the Pose Brush here and using this icon in the Properties tab, change Rotation Origins to Face Sets. Now if I press this green X, you can really see how bent this water is. Hover the mouse over the top of the water and you should see a white line going down the length of the face set. If you drag the mouse with the left button down gently left and right, you will see the water move. Using the viewport guidelines, straighten out the water. Now having straightened out the water, if I turn the tap back on again, you can see it doesn't line up anymore. So I'll go into object mode, select the water and move it along the X and Y until it lines up again. One last thing, if you want to increase the resolution now, I suggest the best way is to remesh in Sculpt mode and smooth it out. Select the water, then go into Sculpt mode, press R and drag the mouse until you get a good resolution. And now press Remesh. Now select the Mesh Filter, change it to Smooth and drag the mouse across the screen. You see it will smooth everything out. You can do it with the Smooth Brush instead if you want a little bit more control and to be honest, maybe that is the better way. So here we are, left with something that can be exported as an STL and 3D printed if that's your thing. If you're interested in making human figures but don't want to do much work, maybe check out the video on generating human figures in Blender that's shown down here on the bottom left of the screen. And let me know if you'd like to see some more simulation stuff, for example, a waterfall.